A once in a lifetime storm, a combination of snow and frigid temperatures shut down almost an entire state's power grid. By Tuesday, nearly four and a half million Texans were without power. It's like the population of three Idaho's and it's lasted for more than three days. So how could this happen? Experts point to two things, the severity of the storm and the singularity of the power grid. These types of extreme temps in Texas are rare, so rare that there were no safeguards against a failure of the infrastructure. But probably the biggest issue, the Lone Star State is alone in its production and access to power. We spoke with a doctor of civil engineering from Boise State whose expertise is in climate analysis. He told us there are three main power grids in the United States, the Eastern Interconnection and the Western Interconnection and the Electric Reliability Council of Texas. That's right in the middle. ERCOT as it's known. And it's not connected to the other interconnections. Been this way for decades. Texas didn't want to deal with the federal regulations to join. So they're basically an island of electricity. And when ERCOT, which accounts for about 90% of the state's power, when that goes down, well, there's really not much that can be done. That's not how this works in Idaho. Unfortunately in Texas, uh, what's happening is not only the failure of their own system, it's because they're not connected to, the, to elsewhere in the country. So now that their system has failed, no one else can help them. So if Texas was a part of either one of these other grids, these national grids, we could have been sending them power and they could have come back online and it wouldn't have lasted as long. Is that correct? That's correct. I mean, look at, look at Oklahoma, right? Why, why don't we have the same situation in Oklahoma? It's, you know, from, from Austin to Oklahoma, it's just a couple of hours drive. Could something like this happen in Idaho? I don't expect this to happen in the cold season in Idaho. Now, we have the infrastructure set up for the cold season, and we are connected to the rest of the system. So if, if, if our system fails, and if Nevada, California has extra energy to send us, we should be fine. My concern is going to be for summer, if, if a large, severe drought happens, meaning that our hydropower generation going down, and if we have wildfires that impact, you know, the smoke covering all the solar panels and uh, et cetera, then we are gonna have an issue with, with providing with the source of electricity for the state. It's not that we are not gonna have some power outage, but we are not gonna have a power outage for three days. I guess what you're saying is, in order for something like this to happen in Idaho, we've gotta be in a serious drought. There's gotta be some major fires that would block out the sun for any solar power. And this would have to be a wide area that this is covering. Exactly. So it should be, it should be multiple uh, states, maybe the Western US entirely, uh, so that we go dark. That would be pretty catastrophic. Uh, that would be, I mean, I, I, we cannot say it's not gonna happen, if you look at the 2020 fire season, you see that Colorado, Oregon, California were all burning at the same time. Uh, so something like that is, is not out of, uh, out of imagination uh, the aspect, but we're hoping it will not happen. We're hoping it won't happen, I guess. So basically most of Idaho is set up to handle extreme heat and cold and for a length of time. We also lean a little more toward, toward renewable energy, which is a good thing, but that can also be kind of a bad thing. A long time severe drought could do some damage to our power source. Idaho Power, the state's largest provider, gets nearly 45% of its energy from hydro. Some of you may remember, there was a time when we were really paying attention to that power. According to Idaho Power, our all time summer peak load occurred in 2017. That was just, well, almost four years ago, but even then, there wasn't a significant threat to that service. And as Dr. Sade said, we might lose hours, not days. More than 150,000 homes are still without power in Texas, by the way. Millions still under a boil water order. And 44 people have died across the South because of winter storm Uri.